Peter Marsh, Chief Executive from the TSA. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Richard. Um, right, I'm going to start off by asking you why is it important to bring young people, politicians, and policy makers together, and particularly why is it important to the housing sector? Okay. Um, housing is a really, really important service. Uh, in, our, in our view, uh, provision of good quality, decent homes in decent communities makes a huge difference to people's life chances and how they get on in life. Um, you often hear too much in the press about young people in a sort of stereotypical way. Um, all the stuff about hoodies and uh, youth culture. Um, it, and I think it's really important that we provide ways in which young people can engage with politicians so that they get a direct voice and hear uh, from young people themselves the concerns that matter to them and the issues and uh, solutions to those concerns that in most cases young people know far more about than those who uh, write all those stories that just pretend that young people don't want to get involved, they don't want to have a say. So uh, it's, it's, it's vital that we find new ways of engaging with young people so that voice gets heard. Okay. And um, what's the best way to keep the social housing at the top of the political agenda? My advice to, to you on that question is make it personal. Uh, uh, this isn't just about the fact there aren't enough homes to go around. It's about the fact that there are. Uh, it's the access to homes means that uh, for very many people uh, uh, in their teens, in their twenties, in their thirties, even in their early forties, uh, which I understand from you, Richard, is still quite old, but uh, from other people's perspective, is quite young. Uh, in your 20s and 30s, uh, you are now more likely to stay living with your mum and dad uh, than you were a generation ago. So access to a place that you can call your home is, a, is I think, a deeply polit political issue. Uh, and there's a big gap, I think, now between um, the number of homes that are available, people who can demonstrate they're needy enough to be allocated a home for social rent, and people who uh, earn enough money to be able to build a deposit up. And meeting the needs of those people in the middle, I think, is a huge political issue. Uh, so the more young people that get their voice raised, the more politicians will listen to their, their needs. Right, so in these homes, what do you think the difference is between the older and the younger tenants' needs? In some respects, needs are very similar. Yeah? Uh, we all want to live in a place that's, that feels safe and secure. We want, we want to uh, walk out of our front door or, or, or down the corridor and feel, feel good to be living here. I think those needs are absolutely the same. Uh, but we have to recognise there are conflicts as well, um, uh, and sometimes uh, the young people's needs to express themselves uh, conflicts with old people's needs to live in a quiet neighbourhood, uh, whether that's uh, the volume on your, uh, your iPod player or whether that's uh, 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 desires to uh, uh, have fun, not about outside, all the things that people considered normal uh, in the past. There are some conflicts. Uh, and I think the more that we can bring young people and older people together to discuss those issues uh, and bring up solutions together, the better. Um, I recently visited a place in York where they'd uh, had a pilot of more bobbies on the beat, and then a year later spent exactly the same money by funding activities to bring young people and old people together uh, through art projects, music projects, uh, IT projects, silver surfing clubs. Uh, the funding for those latter projects was far more effective in removing the fear older people than funding bobbies on the beat. Okay, so you, you say young people and older people should come together to discuss these issues, right, so what are these issues that younger tenants have? Well, um, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't have all the answers to, to, all, uh, to, 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 to everything here, but uh, I suspect that sometimes um, that fear arises because people don't understand each other. Yeah. We often see that, whether it's about young and old, or whether it's people from different backgrounds or different races. And the more you can uh, explore how you feel and understand how your neighbour feels, uh, the more likely are, uh, we are to, get, to come up with, uh, with solutions that, that help. So uh, I think um, there's more that we can share with each other. I like the, the stuff around IT. Um, um, my experience of, of, of projects that bring older people together with younger people that enable uh, the older people to get involved in things like Twitter and Facebook, actually you start to change people's lives. And I think that's a two-way win. Okay, so what do you think the best way is to communicate with young tenants? And in particular, how would you want them to communicate with you? Okay, right. Uh, there is not one simple solution, is there? Uh, 
But if the only thing that's on offer is turning up to a dusty committee room on a Friday night for, for a federation meeting, I don't think you can expect uh, as a landlord uh, to have your uh, doors being knocked down. Yeah. Um, equally, uh, I don't think we should presume that young people don't want to engage in formal structures. You know, I've seen examples of uh, landlords that have set up uh, youth boards uh, with committees uh, where you discuss all the same issues around regeneration, around repairs and maintenance that you would do with any sort of tenant. So in some respects the concerns are the same, but I think we've also got to recognise in a 24-7 society that people want to engage in differently, whether it's through a website, whether it's through uh, SMS, whether it's through video podcasting, or all the, other, all the other new innovative ideas. The wider range of opportunities for involvement, the more chance you've got people having their say. Okay, do you think the TSA should be providing opportunities like jobs and apprenticeships and education to young tenants? Um, all those things are really important. Uh, but as, as, as a regulator, the TSA is a small body. You know, we spend uh, annually about £30 million. Pound. That might sound like a lot of money, uh, but it compares to uh, something like £15 billion pound that housing associations fund. What we're trying to do is encourage housing associations to meet needs in their areas, which might include jobs and opportunities. So to highlight where good practice exists and to pinpoint people uh, to understand how to uh, learn from that good practice, but we don't intend ourselves to be a training department or a workplace department. Um, as a government quango funded by your money, we need to be carefully focused on our core uh, uh, job of regulating housing associations and local authority landlords. So is the social networking, the blogging, yeah. and the street view arts that's on the website, is this the best way to approach young tenants? I think it's a really great way of approaching young tenants. Um, we found ourselves when we ran our national conversation last year that our mobile uh, Big Brother diary room, uh, which was uh, uh, subject to much attention in the housing press, uh, it was in a pink cabin van, uh, we had conversations with people in that space that just would never have turned up uh, to those normal committee rooms, would never have had a chance to say what they cared about in terms of housing. So things like blogging, things like the website, things like street art are a really good vehicle to start a conversation. Okay? And then you might get people more involved in other routes as well. Okay, so do you think this way people in power will acknowledge the issues there are and act upon them? Uh, the, the truth will be in whether or not they, uh, they, they, they respond to the invites to turn up and get, and, and get answers, uh, for you to get answers from, from questions you put to them. Um, I'd encourage people to do so. Um, uh, it doesn't take a lot of time to come and talk, to, uh, talk on a website like this and uh, the uh, amount of questions you can get back about things uh, you care about. And the amount of solutions that politicians and policy advisors can learn by listening to people through websites and other forms of communication, I think is invaluable. So uh, I think it's our job to make sure that we prove this is a win-win uh, tool. Okay, to conclude, in 10 years' time, what sort of legacy do you hope the TSA will ultimately leave? Okay. In 10 years' time is a long way ahead, isn't it? 2020. Um, I hope that in 10 years' time, uh, um, we'll be able to look back and see that um, the gap uh, that exists today in things like satisfaction levels, um, how happy tenants are, is, 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 is not as big as it is today. Today it ranges from something like 58% of tenants are happy in one landlord to 94% in another. I'd like far more tenants to be in the 94% category, so close that gap. Um, I'd like to see more landlords uh, working with their tenants to deliver services to meet locally tailored needs, so more of a tenant voice in the design and delivery of services. And I think uh, if I can throw two more in, uh, I'd like to see us having a clear plan on how we're going to make homes more energy efficient. I think fuel poverty, the carbon uh, emission issue is a big one. If we haven't tackled by 2010, we won't be on, on, on course to meet the government's targets to halve carbon emissions in housing by 2016. That's another big one. And then finally, uh, we have to find a way of building more homes and providing more opportunities to access homes for those people who aren't earning enough to build a deposit up and who aren't needy enough at the moment to be able to get a home for social rent. So there's a big job to do together. Okay, thank you. Thank you.